In this video, I just want to go over the very, very basics of molecular orbital theory. And so molecular orbital theory is a model we use to describe the electron configurations when individual atoms merge and become a molecule. So for instance, we just start with the, let's say, hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom, say, has a nucleus here, and it has the one electron, which lives in the 1s shell. So that's what the electron configuration looks like. We know that it isn't actually like a Newtonian orbit. It's not like a planet orbiting around the Sun. In fact, these are wave functions, these are orbital configurations, and they are configured like a wave function. Now, we also know that if we add two wave functions that are the same, let's say we have another one, this is very same, these are the same, it's very same, then these two will add together, or they will add constructively. Now, if we had, say, one wave function that looks like this, and we tried to introduce it to a different wave function, a wave function that was not the same, it looks something like this, then these two wave functions are not going to add. They're going to add, well they are going to add, but they're going to add deconstructively. Add deconstructively. And so that kind of thing happens when we say add a hydrogen with a different kind of hydrogen, say an ionized hydrogen. Then we'll have different wave functions and they'll just add deconstructively. They won't, they won't, they'll add, it'll be out of phase. Whereas if we add the same wave functions, they'll be in phase. And so molecular orbital theory is sort of a system that we can use to describe what happens when these will basically be added together. So if we have, say, we know that hydrogen is diatomic. In nature, it'll, it'll be existing in H2. So that, that's formed from one H and another H. And we know that the two possibilities are they could add together or it could add deconstructively. And this is add, adding constructively. So we'll just take hydrogen here, hydrogen here, and we have the two possibilities. So this is kind of like when you merge your hands together, you know, it could be up here or down here. You know, hand with some fingers. And if you merge them, it would look kind of like this. And that's kind of what we're happening. We're moving this in, moving this in, and seeing which one it goes up to. So hydrogen has one electron, and this other hydrogen has another electron. And when we add them together, we'll take this one electron, we'll bring it all the way down, because we move from the bottom up. That's the off power principle. And we'll take this one and move it down as well. So they're both going to go here. So we'll have one electron here. And they'll need opposing spins, so the other one will spin the other way. And that's it. So hydrogen, well, H2 molecule will look like this. The, uh, wave functions will add together constructively and none of them will add deconstructively because none of them are opposing. So if say we had another electron here then the next electron couldn't go here anymore it would go up here. But basically we can represent this with bond order. And bond order just means we take the number that are added constructively minus the number that are deconstructively added. deconstruct I don't know why that was messed up that's deconstructively and then you divide that by 2 so in this case we have one orbital and another orbital and they make this orbital here but that counts as two we have one and two electrons so we'll have two orbitals that are added constructively minus zero because we have none up here so we'll minus that by zero divided by 2. And, you know, 2 to cancel out 2, so we just get 1. Now, so that means that the bond order of H2 is 1. And so, that's all it means. This is, we're, just, we're just taking this and describing what happens when we take hydrogen here and hydrogen here, they form a molecule, and
then what will be the bond order? The bond order will be 1. So what happens if, say, we 